Robert Flood Robert Flood, also known as Robertus de Fluctibus, January 17, 1574, September 8, 1637, was a prominent English Paracelsian physician with both scientific and occult interests. He is remembered as an astrologer, mathematician, cosmologist, Kabbalist and Rosicrucian apologist. Flood is best known for his compilations in occult philosophy. He had a celebrated exchange of views with Johannes Kepler concerning the scientific and hermetic approaches to knowledge. Early life. He was born at Millgate House, Bearsted, Kent, not too long before January 17, 1573-4. He was the son of Sir Thomas Flood, a high-ranking governmental official, Queen Elizabeth I's treasurer for a war in Europe, and member of parliament. His mother was Elizabeth Andrews Flood. Education. He entered St. John's College, Oxford as a commoner in 1591, graduating with a BA in 1597 and a MA in 1598. St. John's College, Oxford was one of the few in England with any provision for fellowship. Medicine. William Huffman suggests that the presence of a medical fellow at St. John's College, Oxford influenced Flood's interest in studying medicine. During Flood's time at St. John's College, the medical fellow in residence was Matthew Gwynne. Gwynne had previously produced a tract indicating that, while he practiced Galenique medicine, he was also familiar with the main Paracelsian medical work. Flood may have encountered Gwynne, or his writing, during his time at Oxford, providing an additional influence for his later medical philosophy and practice. Career Between 1598 and 1604, Flood studied medicine, chemistry and hermeticism on the European mainland following his graduation. His itinerary is not known in detail. On his own account he spent a winter in the Pyrenees studying theurgy, the practice of rituals, with the Jesuits. Furthermore, he indicated that he traveled throughout Spain, Italy and Germany following his time in France. Upon returning to England in 1604, Flood matriculated to Christ Church, Oxford. He intended to take a degree in medicine. The main requirements to obtain this, at the time, included demonstrating that he, the supplicant, had read and understood the required medical texts, primarily those by Galen and Hippocrates. Flood defended three theses following these texts, and on May 14, 1605, Flood made his supplication. He graduated with his MB and MD on May 16, 1605. After graduating from Christ Church, Flood moved to London, settling in Fenchurch Street, and making repeated attempts to enter the College of Physicians. Flood encountered problems with the college examiners, both because of his unconcealed contempt for traditional medical authorities, he had adopted the views of Paracelsus, and because of his attitude to authority, especially those of the ancients like Galen. After at least six failures, he was admitted in September 1609. He became a prosperous London doctor, serving as censor of the college four times, 1618, 1627, 1633, and 1634. He also participated in an inspection of the London apothecaries put on by the college in 1614, and helped to author the Pharmacopoeia Londonensis in 1618, a directory of standardized pharmaceutical preparations given by the London College of Physicians. He became such an established figure within the college that he was included in 17th century critiques of the college, including those by Nicholas Culpepper and Peter Coles. Subsequently, both his career and his standing in the college took a turn very much for the better. He was on good terms with Sir William Paddy. Flood was one of the first to support and print the theory of the circulation of the blood of the college's William Harvey. To what extent Flood may have actually influenced Harvey is still debated, in the context that Harvey's discovery is hard to date precisely. The term circulation was certainly ambiguous at that time. Occult interest While he followed Paracelsus in his medical views rather than the ancient authorities, he was also a believer that real wisdom was to be found in the writings of natural magicians. His view of these mystical authorities was inclined towards the great mathematicians, and he believed, like Pythagoras and his followers, that numbers contained access to great hidden secrets. Certainty in religion could only be discovered through serious study of numbers and ratios, this later brought Flood into conflict with Johannes Kepler. Dot. Mystical theory of nature. Tripartite division of matter. Much of Flood's writing, and his pathology of disease, centered around the sympathies found in nature between man, the terrestrial earth, and the divine. While Paracelsian in nature, Flood's own theory on the origin of all things posited that, instead of the tria prima, all species and things stemmed from first, dark chaos, then divine light which acted upon the chaos, which finally brought forth the waters. 
This last element was also called the Spirit of the Lord, and it made up the passive matter of all other substances, including all secondary elements and the four qualities of the ancients. Moreover, the Floodian tripartite theory concluded that Paracelsus' own conception of the three primary principles, sulfur, salt and mercury, eventually derived from chaos and light interacting to create variations of the waters, or spirit. The Trinitarian division is important in that it reflects a mystical framework for biology. Flood was heavily reliant on scripture, in the Bible, the number three represented the Principium Formarum, or the original form. Furthermore, it was the number of the Holy Trinity. Thus, the number three formed the perfect body, paralleling the Trinity. This allowed man and earth to approach the infinity of God, and created a universality in sympathy and composition between all things. Macrocosm-Microcosm Relationship Flood's application of his mystically inclined tripartite theory to his philosophies of medicine and science was best illustrated through his conception of the macrocosm and microcosm relationship. The divine light, the second of Flood's primary principles, was the active agent responsible for creation. This informed the development of the world and the sun, respectively. Flood concluded, from a reading of Psalm 19:4, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun that the spirit of the Lord was contained literally within the sun placing it central to Flood's model of the macrocosm. Remained in manuscript. As the sun was to the earth, so was the heart to mankind. The sun conveyed spirit to the earth through its rays, which circulated in and about the earth giving it life. Likewise, the blood of man carried the spirit of the Lord, the same spirit provided by the sun, and circulated through the body of man. This was an application of the sympathies and parallels provided to all of God's creation by Flood's tripartite theory of matter. The blood was central to Flood's conception of the relationship between the microcosm and macrocosm, the blood and the spirit it circulated interacted directly with the spirit conveyed to the macrocosm. The macrocosmal spirit, carried by the sun, was influenced by astral bodies and changed in composition through such influence. Comparatively, the astral influences on the macrocosmal spirit could be transported to the microcosmal spirit in the blood by the active commerce assumed between the macrocosm and the microcosm. Flood extended this interaction to his conception of disease, the movement of spirit between the macrocosm and microcosm could be corrupted and invade the microcosm as disease. Like Paracelsus, Flood conceived of disease as an external invader, rather than a complexional imbalance. Death Flood died on September 8, 1637 in London. He was buried in Holy Cross Church, Bearsted. Controversial Works Flood's works are mainly controversial. In succession he defended the Rosicrucians against Andreas Lobavius, debated with Kepler, argued against French natural philosophers including Gassendi, and engaged in the discussion of the weapon salve. Defense of Rosicrucianism Flood was not a member of the Rosicrucians, as often alleged, but he defended their thoughts as expressed in numerous manifestos and pamphlets. He produced a quick work, the Apologia Compendiaria, against the claims of Lobavius that the Rosicrucians indulged in heresy, diabolical magic and sedition, made in his analysis Confessionis Fraternitatis de Rosia Cruz, analysis of the Confession of the Rosy Cross, of 1615. Flood returned to the subject at greater length, the following year. It is now seriously doubted that any formal organization identifiable as the Brothers of the Rose Cross, Rosicrucians, ever actually existed in any extant form. The theological and philosophical claims circulating under this name appear, to these outsiders, to have been more an intellectual fashion that swept Europe at the time of the Counter-Reformation. These thinkers suppose that in claiming to be part of a secret cult, scholars of alchemy, the occult, and hermetic mysticism, merely sought that additional prestige by being able to promote their views while claiming exclusive adherence to some revolutionary pan-European secret society. By this logic, some suppose the society itself to never have existed. Between 1607 and 1616, Two anonymous Rosicrucian manifestos were published by some anonymous person or group, first in Germany and later throughout Europe. These were the Fama Fraternitatis, the Fame of the Brotherhood of R.C., and the Confessio Fraternitatis, the Confession of the Brotherhood of R.C. The first manifesto was influenced by the work of the respected Hermetic philosopher Heinrich Conrath, of Hamburg, author of the Amphitheatrum Sapientiae Eternae, 1609, who himself had borrowed generously from the work of John D. Dodd it referred favorably to the role played by the Illuminati and it featured a convoluted manufactured history dating back to archaic mysteries of the Middle East, with references to the Kabbalah and the Persian Magi. The Second Manifesto had decidedly anti-Catholic views which were popular at the time of the Counter-Reformation. 
these manifestos were reissued several times, and were both supported and countered by numerous pamphlets from anonymous authors. About 400 manuscripts and books were published on the subject between 1614 and 1620. The peak of the Rosicrucianism furor came in 1622 with mysterious posters appearing on the walls of Paris, and occult philosophers such as Michael Meyer, Robert Flood and Thomas Vaughan interested themselves in the Rosicrucian worldview. Others intellectuals and authors later claimed to have published Rosicrucian documents in order to ridicule their views. The furor faded out and the Rosicrucians disappeared from public life until 1710 when the secret cult appears to have been revived as a formal organization. It is claimed that the work of John Amos Comenius and Samuel Hartlib on early education in England were strongly influenced by Rosicrucian ideas, but this has not been proven, and it appears unlikely except in the similarity in their anti-Catholic views and emphasis on science education. Rosicrucianism is also said to have been influential at the time when operative masonry, a guild of artisans, was being transformed to speculative masonry, Freemasonry, which was a social fraternity, which also originally promoted the scientific and educative view of Comenius, Hartlib, Isaac Newton, and Francis Bacon. Rosicrucian literature became the sandbox of theosophists, and charlatans, who claimed to be connected with the mysterious brotherhood. Robert Flood led the battle, it is said by some that he was the great English mystical philosopher of the 17th century, a man of immense erudition, of exalted mind, and, to judge by his writings, of extreme personal sanctity. It has also been said that what Flood did was to liberate occultism, both from traditional Aristotelian philosophy, and from the coming, Cartesian, philosophy of his time. Against Kepler Johannes Kepler criticized Flood's theory of cosmic harmony in an appendix to his Harmonice Mundi, 1619. Against the natural philosophers According to Brian Kopenhaver, Kepler accused Flood of being a theosophist, and Kepler was right. Flood was well read in the tradition coming through Francesco Giorgi. Marin Mersenne attacked him and questioned Celeb in Genesim, 1623. Pierre Gassendi took up the controversy in an exam in Philosophie Floodane. 1630. This was at Mersenne's request. Gassendi attacked Flood's Neoplatonic position. He rejected the syncretic move that placed alchemy, Kabbalah and Christian religion on the same footing, and Flood's Anima Mundi. Further he dismissed Flood's biblical exegesis. Flood also wrote against the tillage of light, 1623, of Patrick Scott. Scott like Mersenne found the large claims of hermetic alchemy to be objectionable. Flood defended alchemy against the criticisms of Scott who took it to be merely allegorical. This work, Truth's Golden Harrow, remained in manuscript. The Weapon Salve Controversy The idea that certain parallel actions could be initiated and linked by sympathetic mysterious forces was widespread at this time, probably arising mainly from the actions of the magnet, shown by Gilbert, to always point towards some point in the northern sky. The idea owed a lot of the older Aristotelian and Neoplatonic views about soul-like forces. Cosmology and Other Works Flood's philosophy is presented in Eutrius Cosmi, Maioris Silicid et Minoris, Metaphysica, Physica, Atque Technica Historia, the metaphysical, physical, and technical history of the two worlds, namely the greater and the lesser, published in Germany between 1617 and 1621, according to Francis Yates, his memory system, which she describes in detail in The Art of Memory, pages 321 to 341, may reflect the layout of Shakespeare's Globe Theater, The Art of Memory, Chapter 16. In 1618, Flood wrote to Musica Mundana, Mundane Music, which described his theories of music, including his mundane, also known as divine or celestial, monochord. In 1630, Flood proposed many perpetual motion machines. People were trying to patent variations of Flood's machine in the 1870s. Flood's machine worked by recirculation by means of a water wheel and Archimedean screw. The device pumps the water back into its own supply tank. His main works are Posthumous work An unpublished manuscript, copied by an amanuensis, and headed Declaratio Broyes, and C, is in the Royal Manuscripts, British Library, 12 C. 2. Flood's opera consists of his folios, not reprinted, but collected and arranged in six volumes in 1638, appended is a clavis philosophy at alchemy flooding. Frankfurt, 1633. Reception William D. Walker, reviewing two books on Flood in the 16th Century Journal, by Jocelyn Godwin, and William Huffman, writes that Flood relied on the Bible, the Kabbalah, and the traditions of alchemy and astrology. 
many of his contemporaries labeled Flood a magician and condemned him for his sympathy for the occult. He cites Godwin's book as arguing that Flood was part of the tradition of Christian esotericism that includes Origen and Meister Eckhart. He finds convincing the argument in Huffman's book that Flood was not a Rosicrucian but was a leading advocate of Renaissance Christian Neoplatonism. Flood's advocacy of an intellectual philosophy in decline has done much to assure his general neglect. Notes, done much to assure his general neglect. Notes, done much to assure his general neglect.